Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about the Sturmpanzer. It is generally known as the Brumbar, however this name has never been actually used by the Germans in the documents. Not a lot of people know where the name the Brumbar came from, but it's speculated that this came from the Allied intelligence. The name, which the Germans did do use, however, was the Stupa. But before we get deeper into the subject, I'd like to take a second of your time to say that I opened up a Discord server. The link will be in the comments and in the description. So if you'd like to join a community with a lot of tank enthusiasts, you're more than welcome to join us there. When you join within the first four days of this video's release, you will get a special rank named Pre2K to show you followed learning history together before the 2000 subscribers. After those four days, you cannot earn this rank anymore. Anyway, that's enough about that, let's get back to the subject at hand. We will mostly talk about the Sturm Panzer IV. In 1942, Albert Speer placed an order for a howitzer to be placed on a tank chassis. This was so it could keep up with the Panzer divisions. This order was eventually received by Alcat. For this, AFV, the chassis of the Panzer IV was used and was fitted with a 15cm howitzer. The Sturm Panzer could carry up to 38 rounds in his cast mate and hull. It had one secondary armament and that was the MG34. This was fastened to the open gunner hatch. This was done as the same way as the Stuk 3 Aus G. The earlier versions also had MP40 submachine guns on board intended to fire through two firing ports on each side of the superstructure. The Student Panzer was decently armored. It had a frontal armor thickness of 100mm placed at a 40 degree angle. For its hull that was 50mm at a 15 degree angle. For the side of the superstructure it was 30mm and that was the same for the hull. And its rear was 20mm. And for the rear of the hull that was only 10mm. I found a picture of these armor values but I thought these weren't exactly extremely reliable so I personally decided to leave them out. The Student Panzer weighed 28 tons and was almost 6 meters long. Almost 2.9 meters wide and just over 2.5 meters tall. This allowed it to have 5 crew members in there. These consisted of the commander, the gunner, 2 loaders and 1 driver. The Sturmpanzer was outfitted with a Maybach HL 120 engine. This was the same engine which was used for the Nashorn tank destroyer. This allowed it to have a top speed of 40 km an hour on the road and off road this was reduced to 24 km an hour. And the Sturmpanzer had an operational range of 210 km. Operational history. The Sturmpanzer was put in four different battalions named the Sturmpanzer Abteilungen 216th, 217th, 218th and 219th. The Sturmpanzer first saw action in the Battle of Kursk, the largest tank battle ever fought. This battle saw also the introduction of the German Panther, Nashorn and Ferdinand tank and AFVs. The Sturmpanzer was with the 216th when it formed the 4th battalion of the 656th where they pushed as far as Ponyrai. Afterwards it withdrew to a defensive position to repel the Soviet counter-offensive around Oriel. As an independent battalion it next saw service in Anzio in Italy and from there until the end of the war the battalion was forced to destroy its remaining vehicles and surrender in Po Valley. The 218th fought against the Warsaw Uprising and then remained on the Eastern Front until it was destroyed in Eastern Prussia in April 1945. During the Battle of Normandy in summer 1944, the short-barreled 15cm Sturmpanzer force were deployed to assist in street fighting in the villages and to deal with the enemy units in fortified locations. The 217th reported that between the 1st and the 15th of August 1944, the battalion had lost 10 men. 12 were missing and 35 were wounded. Only 17 Sturmpanzers were actually combat ready and 14 were under repairs, predicted to be ready in less than 3 weeks. The remaining Sturmpanzer force of that battalion continued to see action supporting the, yeah I can't say that, and the 89th Infantry Division. Both units fought on the same front in Normandy. Those that escaped the files pocket were reformed and later saw action during the Battle of the Bulge, otherwise known as the Ardennes Offensive. And eventually this unit was captured in the rear pocket in April 1945. My opinion. Well as I already said this is mainly an infantry support weapon so its main importance is to destroy fortified positions. It had some decent armor, 100mm frontal armor is even more than the Yak Panther for example. It was decently quick and what was useful was that it was light as well. 
Sadly, I could not find anything on the reload speed, but considering the shell is 43 kilograms, I do not expect it to be rather quick. It didn't have an open top, which was a serious weakness for tank destroyers from Germany at the time. The reason for this was because the Allies had air superiority and the open top would expose your crewmen to more danger and stuff like grenades. Anyway guys, that was it for today's video. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and leaving a like on the video. Let's try to get the 150 likes within 24 hours, I would really appreciate that. If you want to watch another video, I got one on the left here and a playlist on the right. So feel free to click on one of those and have a very good day.